Hey everybody, I'm Jason Bent. Welcome back to the channel. To close the year out, I'm gonna be doing a, another shop tour video. The last one that I did was around summer of last year, right after I got everything done with my shop. But in 2021, I actually made quite a few changes, added quite a few things to the shop. So in this video, we're just gonna kind of go all the way around the room uh, and then kind of end in the center of the room. And as I go around the room, I'm gonna be talking about uh, not only the things that I kept the same and why I kept them the same, but also things that I had changed why I changed them, how they've been working out. And I'll probably also highlight a couple of things that I do plan on changing in 2022. And then in each one of the areas, I'm gonna talk about why I have things set up the way that I do. So for those of you that haven't seen my previous shop tour video, I'm gonna start this video off by kind of telling you the layout of my shop and some of the key features. And if you guys wanna go see uh, some other videos that kind of explain some of these features in more detail, I'll leave a link to that down in the video description. But here's just a quick overview of the shop. The square footage of my shop is roughly 30 feet wide and 20 feet deep. So it's on the smaller side of a three car garage. However, the single bay door, I actually removed all the rails completely and walled that one single door in to give me more wall space, which I'll talk about here in just a moment. The lighting that I use in my shop is American Green Lights LEDs. And with this space, I have 22 24 watt LED lights. As I stated before, I've removed the rails and everything for one of the single garage doors. And on the double door, I actually raised the rails up and installed a side mount garage door opener, which is not only much more quiet, but it actually completely took that out of the center of my shop. And it is now on the wall next to the garage door. So it just gave me a lot of space and options for the shop in general. My garage has just one wall that's attached to the home and I'll talk about those as I go through the shop tour and the other three are not attached to the home. Now with that, all of my walls are insulated and have drywall and then there is no room above the garage. It is just attic space and in the attic, it is all blown in insulation above the garage. Additionally, my garage doors were not insulated. So I did add some of these insulation panels to my garage door. So the entire garage is very well insulated. And with the insulation comes my climate control in the shop. And I have a Mr. Cool 18,000 BTU mini split. I've been running it in the shop for about a year and a half now. It is still running very strong. It works very, very well. And it helps keep my shop at a comfortable temperature throughout the entire year. So now for the power. And when we actually get over to that section, I'll give you a closer look of what the power situation looks like. However, I have 200 amp service to my house. I have both 110 and 220, and I have multiple outlets of each which again, I'll, I'll brief that a little bit more as we go down that wall. Okay, so the way that I'm gonna work this is I'm gonna go around the exterior portion and the first three walls I'm gonna show you are the walls that are not attached to the home. Again, I said I only had one wall that was attached to the home. So this is coming away from the home. This is obviously the side that has my garage doors. And as you can see, this is my two bay garage door. And one thing I wanted to highlight is up here I had mentioned that I had raised the rails for the garage door and they're only about, I would say 12 inches uh, from the ceiling. And then this right here is my actual garage door opener. And there's really nothing special to talk about on this wall other than, you know, I did take advantage of storing one of my rails. I actually plan on putting some of the others, um, but this is the garage door insulation that I was talking about. And this has worked really, really well. I get a lot of questions about this. I had this in a house in Georgia and I just got these from Home Depot. Um, I believe it's like the Pink Panther, you know, garage door insulation kits. You buy them as a single set and it gives you eight of the panels. Um, so you have to buy two basically to do a garage door. They're really, really, really easy to install, um, but they've worked out really well. I haven't had any issues with them you know, falling out. Um, I started to tape some of these off just to kind of keep them in there. And then I got lazy and I haven't done it since. And now I would have to clean everything really well to make sure the tape sticks, but it works really good. A lot of people ask, have asked me questions about that. One thing that I get a lot and, and people freak out when I talk about this and they're like, Hey, you shouldn't add a bunch of weight to your garage door because of the springs and all that stuff. And while that is true, um, this has two springs on it. And I told them when I installed it, look, hey, I'm gonna be installing some garage door insulation kits. You know, they said, well, depending on how much weight you're adding to it, it should be fine. Something that I've done is I've tested it out and actually raised this up a little bit and stopped it to see if it was gonna naturally start going back down. That has never happened. 
Um, I have not experienced any issues in this house or my last house. Um, so I don't know if they maybe put a little bit of extra tension in it knowing that I was going to be doing that. Uh, but if you're gonna be doing something like this, keep that in mind because it actually does talk about that. But um, again, it has worked really, really well. Um, it, it does a great job in both the winter and in the uh, summertime. It actually does even better in the summertime. One thing I will add is along this wall, I do have my router table. This is a recent change. I've kind of gone all over the place with where I wanted to place my router table. The router table is movable. Um, but I don't like having to move things to use them. So I've always tried to find a place that I could store tools where I would never have to move them. Well, the router table is just not one of them. Matter of fact, I'm probably getting rid of it. With that being said, one of the other things in my previous shop tour video that I had right here was my drum sander, which I did get rid of. The reason why I got rid of my drum sander is because I just wasn't using it. It was taking up space. Both of them were mobile. And the reason why I had them over here um, is because my table saw used to previously be turned in opposite direction. And it was kind of a nice place to keep them out of the way. Um, but getting rid of that opened up all kinds of space. So that's why you kind of see this, this whole area is kind of just opened up. Okay, so now that I have just a better visual, again, you can see this right here is my garage door opener, uh, kind of in the top of the frame there. Uh, next to that, I've actually got one of these retractable cords. I've got a set of four plugs which is what my drill press, my garage door opener, uh, this right here, and my uh, air compressor, they all plug into that outlet up there. None of them are really ever being used at the same time, so it's never been an issue. Uh, on the wall right here, I had mentioned before, this is just kind of a cabinet that uh, I store some of my you know, drill bits, things I would use at the drill press, some of my larger hole saws, things like that. They're just here out of the way. Uh, and then hanging underneath it, I've got, uh, on these little, you know, fittings that you would use for air tools. Uh, I've got them underneath the bottom side of the cabinet, and that is how I can leave my uh, narrow crown stapler, my brad nailer, and my pin nailer uh, all right here. And the reason I have those here is because my hose reel and my air compressor, they're all out of the way, kind of stacked on top of each other. So these tools are where I would be connecting them at. And that was important to me. I wanted to make sure that instead of me having to go to the other side of the shop, I could basically just grab my hose, take my air guns, move around the shop wherever I need to. Um, I want to say this is like 75 or 100 feet. Um, it's way more than I need and it's way too big. I'm actually going to be getting rid of this and going with a smaller option, which I originally wanted in the first place. And I kind of wish that I would have got that. Um, but this is just much larger than I need. But the reason why it's on the wall where it is, is because not only can I access anywhere in my shop at any time, no problem, but I can also open up my garage door and do anything I need to do with an air compressor on the outside, say filling up uh, tires with air or something like that, right? So I have plenty of, of movement. It's kind of centrally located, not only for the shop, but for anything I might need to use it for outside. And then again, here you see the drill press. Um, again, I moved it back to where it originally was. It just works really well here. Uh, I have plenty of access on both sides and it's close to my assembly table, which we'll talk about once we get in the, my assembly table more. And then underneath, I just have one of the rigid oscillating spindle sanders. And I just keep that there because it's out of the way again, close to my assembly table. So you're going to hear me talking about the assembly table a lot throughout this shop tour video. And there's a reason, and that's actually going to be the area that we end this entire shop tour on. This is where I have my drill press and why I have some of the things that I do next to it. Okay. So now we're continuing on down that same wall. And again, this wall right here from my house to this back wall is about 30 feet. So it's 30 feet this way, uh, 20 feet in depth. But on this wall, this is what I was talking about with where the single bay door would be. So if I was to actually remove this wall, you would see the, the single bay garage door, which is also insulated. Um, I did that before I actually built the wall. But the reason why I did this is because if I didn't do this, I would not have any usable space, I guess, on in front of this garage door. So because I'm never using the garage door, I don't even have rails for it or a garage door opener. It's literally just down, insulated and pinned in place. And then I built a frame, a two by four frame or two by six, I believe frame uh, to go in front of it. And it's just faced with some black melamine. Behind it, their studs are 16 on center. And what this gave me is the ability to hang all kinds of stuff and use the top for storage. So let's start at the top. Um, up here, 
Previously, I was kind of just storing all of my unused sustainers, all the empty sustainers up here. Now I actually have this for lumber storage, right? So uh, up on top of here is just a bunch of cherry um, that I store up here out of the way. Um, and it, it really gave me the ability to store quite a bit of lumber up there. So then moving down, obviously you see all of the different clamps uh, that I use in my shop, along with a couple of other small uh, little accessories. I've got my Inkra sled over there, which is really not the best place for it because when I use it, I've got to come all the way over here to use it. But I don't have a better place for it next to the table saw. So that's why that's there. Um, but mostly it's just clamps. Uh, I've got a router bit storage cabinet here, um, which this isn't the greatest place in the world for it. However, it's all quarter inch bits in here. And primarily if I'm using quarter inch bits, I'm either running my CNC or I'm using a trim router at my assembly table. So to me, it made sense. Let's have the bits that I need to use the most next to the assembly table. So that's why that's there. And then right here you see, I've got all the woodpecker stuff. So this wall is basically unchanged since my last um, shop tour video. However, uh, the lumber on top has changed. This is going to be a thing that I'm going to change. Um, and I think the reason is, is because as you can see, I've got a lot of clamps, right? Everybody's like, oh, you can never have enough clamps. Well, that's, I don't think that's true because what I find is the clamps that I want to use and that I like to use, or I need to use for the application is the one that you usually don't have enough. So then you end up just piecemealing a bunch of clamps to do something that they may not even be designed to do. So um, now that I've been here for over a year, I know which clamps I use a lot and which clamps I almost never use. And so what I think I'm going to do is actually downsize the clamps that I have out. Um, not necessarily meaning I'm going to get rid of the clamps. It's just that I don't use them or I don't need them enough to justify them taking up the space when I could be putting other things up here. So uh, that's kind of my mindset behind that. With that being said, one of the things that I might use this area for is... I've recently started to enjoy using um, hand tools, believe it or not. I know it's, it's hard to believe that Jason Bent is talking about enjoying using hand tools. Um, so what I have here is, is a space basically that I could put a small hand tool bench uh, and then open up some area for me to use this to store some of my, uh, my hand tools, right? And I like the idea of it being right here. I don't need a ton of space, you know, in this little, this little walkway here. Um, and I'm actually planning on shifting my assembly table over just a little bit, but this would give me the ability uh, to do a little bit of hand tool work and kind of dabble with that a little and give me a place to store the tools. So um, a lot of this stuff is probably gonna get reorganized. Uh, all of this is coming down. Um, I'll be honest with you, 50% of the stuff that's on this wall, I almost never use. Um, so a lot of it's gonna be going away. Um, there are certain things that I do use, but I'm gonna find a better location for them. So this is coming off. Uh, I'm gonna redo the way that I store these clamps, uh, probably going with some of the woodpeckers uh, racks that actually let you store them out this way. I honestly believe I can get all of my major clamps that I use in an area this big, okay? So that's probably what I'm gonna be doing. So uh, that's the layout of this wall. This is just kind of a, a space where I can store smaller things uh, that I kind of want out of the way so they don't take up any additional space. Okay, so now we're on the farthest wall away from the house. Um, you can see there's a couple windows. Uh, my main street is out on the back side of this, my front yard, everything. And so on this wall, this is a, a major change from what I talked about in my previous shop tour video. So when I moved in here, one of the things that I was really intrigued by was the Rockler metal stands and metal bases. And so I basically built all of the shop furniture out of those and then built cabinetry into them. My reasoning for that was one, I wanted to get up and running very quickly. And two, I liked the look and I liked the idea of having those basically fully customizable metal stands. Well, after uh, working with those a long time, there was nothing wrong with them. Uh, I've actually had a lot of people ask me like, why did you move away from them? I saw that video, I bought some, I love them. I like them, they're great. My assembly table is still on it for now. Um, there's, I have no complaints. I just decided to disassemble it and rebuild something that met my needs more and I actually donated those uh, existing stands to a, a local woodworker. So what I built here was something to give me a little bit more capacity and a little bit more support. And when I talk about support, obviously I'm talking about left and right of the blade, even though I'm not cutting really long pieces, 
Um, what I found was the more support you have, that means the more storage you have underneath it. So I kind of expanded on everything and basically just rebuilt an entire cabinet set. Uh, and I'll start from the right hand side here. So I've got three large deep drawers, uh, the top one, and I'll kind of give you a better idea as I'm talking about these drawers, but uh, on the right hand side, three very large drawers. And the biggest reason for that was I wanted a drawer that I could store my larger offcuts and my smaller offcuts, things that are not enjoyable trying to put on a rack and then having to move all the time. So in this top drawer, it's just full of offcuts and scraps. And so not only is it out of the way, but it's right next to my miter saw, right? So I make a cut, I can then store my scraps over here in this drawer or throw them away if they're not worth keeping. And I have three drawers like that. The other two are just being used for storage right now, but if I ever need the capacity for more scraps and all that, I have those other drawers. So I have three more banks. I have this one and then these two over here. And there's kind of a method to this. Over here you see I have five drawers in each one of these cabinets. And then this one right here I have four and then that one right there I have three. So I started multiple drawers, smaller, skinnier, some slightly deeper drawers, and then really large deep drawers. So I, I know that this may sound weird, but this is my reasoning for doing this, right? When I'm standing here, the things that I need mostly are going to be in these drawers. And again, I'll show you those drawers here closer in a minute. But I'm gonna be standing here and I'm gonna work and I'm gonna be turning around, grabbing what I need here or grabbing the things that I need out of here. When I'm cutting at the miter saw, you know, I'm taking the scraps and I'm placing them over here. So that's kind of the way that I'm thinking. That doesn't really have that much to do with these drawers. I just needed some medium sized drawers to put things in. On top of the miter saw station, uh, this is a removable uh, hood here. I can take it out anytime I need to. So if I'm ever making angled cuts or something like that, I am taking this off. However, I usually just leave it on there like that, but it's easily removable very quick. Now, why did I do this? Well, the reason I did this is because I wanted to stop as much of the dust as I could from constantly getting all over this stuff. Now, this is not a perfect solution. It doesn't stop it uh, completely, but it does do a really good job of keeping the dust inside of this and allowing it to fall down, which I'll talk about here in just a moment. So while it's not completely dust proof, it is really, really helping in keeping the dust out. Now, a lot of people have asked me, well, why didn't you put some sort of enclosure on here? Because at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. I don't have any sort of built-in uh, dust collection going to this box. My only goal is to stop a lot of that dust from going all over the place and helping a lot of it fall down. And it works really well, right? Um, and then obviously I've got the, the dust collection for the uh, miter saw underneath here. And that goes all the way down and it just has a hose that runs up. And then I have extra space for storage, bags, extra hoses, things like that. Now, one other thing about this miter saw setup is that if you were to look at this uh, miter saw, you would actually see that it is open down into this cabinet. However, there's a drawer, there's a tray underneath it. And the reason I did that is because I wanted all of that dust that was being caught in there and dropping down to go down into this tray that I made that is removable. And in it, you can see I've got a lot of offcuts, uh, a lot of different dust. And all I have to do is I just take this out and dump this every once in a while. And it works really, really good. It just operates on a wooden runner system. You put it back in, cabinets closed just fine. I got the storage, I've got all the dust falling down. Um, and so that, that's been working really, really well. A lot of people have, have wanted to know how this has been working out since I built it. And that's probably one of my favorite features about it. So I'm gonna bring you guys around so you can see it from the other direction here in just a moment. But we'll just go ahead and continue on down. Uh, one thing I wanted to highlight about the top is that there is no fence. I just have a T-track and I use some of these modified Festool stops and I measure everything manually. I don't, I don't have a tape. Uh, on the top, I actually measure everything manually. I set everything to the way I need it and then I make my cuts. And then these, these are easily removable just by sliding them out if I ever wanna take them out. On the top, I've actually, I've become quite a fan of the sortainers from Festool because they give me the ability to store a lot of things, especially a lot of small things, cabinet parts, certain small screws, um, drill bits, all of these different things. I can label everything. It has really been nice to have, but I have those sitting on top because I want easy access to them 
again, while I'm working at my assembly table. So I've got those on the right-hand side, and then I've got some of the larger sortainers on the left-hand side. And again, same thing. This has a lot of my regular larger style tools, screwdrivers, wrenches, that kind of thing. On top of those, I keep all of my different notebooks or you know, drafting pads or any of those things. All of that stuff is right here, again, because I'm using it at this location. And then above, this is where I have uh, the OmniWall set up. And I've had this since I moved in. Uh, I've changed it a couple of times. The way that I have it now has actually been the way that I've run with the longest. And it is just awesome to have. It is just fantastic. I like my tools to be out. I tried to have my tools in a sustainer for a very long period of time. And I, it just drove me nuts because I was always opening up the boxes. So now I'd much rather have the tools out. Sure, they're getting dusty. I don't care. They're woodworking tools. They're meant to get dirty. Um, but th this is where I have everything, okay? All of the main tools, right? On this right here, I've just got one of these um, Harbor Freight magnets. It costs like 10 bucks. Um, really strong. I keep all of my domino bits and my wrenches, um, things that I use on my drills, you know, uh, bits, uh, jigsaw blades, common Allen keys that I need. They're all right there, um, easily accessible, and I can just plop them off. On the right-hand side, I've got all of my, you know, drill area, right? I've got all of my drills, batteries, jigsaw, a couple of, you know, odds and ends, different ex uh, consumables, things like that. Um, new uh, trim router, battery operated trim router that I just got, Makita. And then on the top is the bigger tools, the track saw, the Conturo. So again, all of these things are out all the time, easily accessible for me to grab. And so I'm going to bring you in close to kind of talk about these uh, two banks of drawers specifically. But one thing I wanted to address was the continuation of the work surface on my um, miter saw station. So one of the things that I didn't like about it before was that I had, I could not store anything in this area over here because I had the dust collector in this corner. So everything above this was just dead space. Matter of fact, I just found myself putting a bunch of crap on top of the dust collector and I didn't like that. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to extend my surface all the way down and it allowed for a few things, right? The first thing is it gave me usable space above my dust collector. I still have plenty of space to clean the filters out, to do everything I need to do, but now I actually have usable space above this. And that's one of the biggest benefits to the Harvey dust collector is this low profile, right? So it can be underneath a workbench and you can actually utilize the space above it. And so that's exactly what I did. And to do that, I just put a couple of two by fours on the back here, on the wall and the sides. And then I just went to Home Depot and I bought one of these um, butcher block tops and I basically just set it on top of the frame that I built, and now I have all this extra space. So some of the sustainers that I still do use, I'm actually able to put them up on this surface, and it just gives me a lot more storage, and it's not in the way for if I have a really long board, which is the other reason why I did this. Now I have a ton of support all the way over to the corner of the wall. I think I've got, maybe it's just over nine feet or something like that, uh, total distance from there uh, to the cut. But doing this was a huge, huge, help and, and I'm so glad that I did it because like I said, I have additional storage for things that I use on a regular basis. And then I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but over in the corner, I got a TV and honestly, I'm probably gonna take it out. The only reason I have this in here uh, is because on football season, I like to watch football, at least have it playing. Um, but the reason I never usually have the TV on is because I'm doing what I'm doing right now and that's filming. So I can't have the TV on, I get really tired of hitting mute. So. Um, I don't know if I need to take it down because I don't know what else I would put there, uh, but I don't really need a TV in my shop. That's what I've come to realize. Okay, so I, I wanted to bring you in close specifically for these two banks of drawers. Um, one thing I, I knew when I built this is that I wanted more drawers and I wanted more smaller drawers. And so what I've got here is the ability to store lots of different things by item. So to give you an example of what I'm talking about. So before I, you know, you saw I have all the, the different festival tools that I have um, easily accessible. Well, part of that is I wanted to have a couple of drawers that I could store festival accessories for each of those tools so they're not out cluttering up a space. So the very first two drawers that I have here, I'm able to keep all of my accessories. For example, this right here is all router accessories for the different routers. This right here is all domino and sander accessories Conturo accessories. Then as I go down here, this is a lot more of the consumables, right? Pads, blades, um, 
pucks for the Conturo, just a charger, jigsaw blades, all of my consumables, um, they're all stored in this one drawer. Over here on this side, this drawer right here has all of the different TSO products, uh, tools that I use on a regular basis. This is actually one of the drawers that needs to get um, some Kaizen foam in it so I can actually organize this a lot better. This drawer right here, uh, this is again consumables and uh, some other odds and ends things that I don't necessarily have a dedicated drawer for. Uh, this is a lot of like foam brushes when I do my finish comparisons. Uh, I got some extra dominoes in here. Uh, I've got some 3D printed uh, tools for the domino here. Um, I got some setup blocks, uh, some uh, scrap pieces that I use for uh, templates for hinges, things like that. Moving back over to this one. This has all of my uh, smaller, you know, Bessie clamp accessories, uh, things that I use uh, on a routine basis that I don't have a place for out on the wall. Uh, for example, you know, the K-body extenders, the, the jaws, things like that. Small things that I need in a space. So that's all Bessie. And one thing I plan on doing is actually labeling each one of these so I know, like, if I'm looking for a TSO thing, it's there. If I'm looking for a festival accessory, Bessie. Continuing on down, this drawer, this drawer has all of the different manuals uh, for any of the different tools. I keep every single manual, they're all right here if I ever need them. Moving over here to this side, this again, this is some more festival accessories, but these are all accessories for the Conturo. Um, some of these I'm actually probably gonna end up putting back in the sustainer and just free up that drawer. Down here in the bottom, uh, all spare screws, bags for the dust collector, um, some uh, sanding pads, things like that. Overflow stuff, basically. And then down here, this is all edge banding equipment. Like everything for edge banding, whether it's the edge banding, whether it's the tools, whether it's uh, peel and stick, glue on, uh, machine use, it's all in this drawer. And since I showed you what was in those drawers, I guess it's only fair that I talk about these. So in this drawer, this is my vast hand tool collection. So I've got my chisels and the couple planes that I do have, uh, some sharpening equipment. In this drawer, I've got my uh, castle machine. I've got uh, one of my trim routers now, my corded DeWalt. Uh, so everything for the trim routers and the castle is all in this drawer. So in this drawer, um, I've got some hinge and uh, slide stuff really because I kind of just toss it in here. Um, but a lot of my electronic stuff is in here. So the things I do live streaming with, microphones, extra stuff like that, some towels. And then down here in the bottom is just random things uh, that I don't really have a space for. So nothing exciting. Okay, so now we're over in the corner. We're gonna start working our way back down the other long wall. Again, this is not attached to my home. Um, I'll bring you in closer for the electrical portion. Um, but I wanted to start here. The one thing I'm the most happy about in this shop is installing a mini split. Again, I have the Mr. Cool 18,000 BTU. I don't care which one you get, right? But if you're looking at one of these, these are very reasonably priced. I installed it myself and it was very, very easy. It took a few hours. This thing has been running strong. Yes, my shop is insulated. So I have to caveat it with that. If you're gonna put something like this in your shop, you have to have an insulated shop or else you're really not doing anything. It might help a little bit, it's not gonna help the way that it needs to. It's just gonna run all the time and constantly be fighting. This is the best thing I did in my space because having a climate controlled space is worth every penny. I think that's more important to me in, an, in another shop before tools. I would invest heavily if I build another shop and a multi-zone unit, whatever it is, worth every penny. If you're, if you're somebody that has been wondering, is it worth it to get a mini split. Yes, 100%. If you want to enjoy the space you're in, do this. Invest in insulation and a mini split unit and you'll be super happy. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, moving over here, this is just a random storage cabinet. I have a lot of finish type items, fillers, star bond, glue, uh, a couple different finishes, um, a lot of Rubio stuff up on the top, cleaning supplies, that sort of stuff. That's right here. I like it here. I might put something else here later on in the future, but uh, this has been working out just fine. And then obviously I have my dust collection uh, pipe that runs along this wall and kind of goes throughout the shop, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Directly in front of that, this is my uh, CT36. Um, this is a change. I used to have the boom arm and it used to actually be underneath my assembly table, but I was tired of the boom arm uh, bar being in the way all the time. And I found it to be more of a nuisance than anything for my current setup in my last shop, it worked perfectly. So I ended up buying one of the work centers 
And this has worked out really good. It gives me the ability to put some, you know, random tools on top uh, and I can just wheel this thing around and it works really, really well. So I have this here because it allows me to do everything I need to do at my assembly table. Okay, I wanted to bring you in a little bit closer to discuss the electrical stuff. I'm not an electrician. I didn't do the electrical in my shop. I hired a local professional uh, electrical company and they came out. We talked about different options and different possibilities and this is what we came up with. So this is my main panel on the house and I have a 200 amp service and every one of my spots was filled. So what we did is we threw in a couple of tandem uh, breakers to free up two spaces, right? So we could then take a 100 amp breaker and place a 100 amp breaker in here. And then we installed another panel that all operates off that 100 amp breaker. Now, in here, I still have plenty of room to grow. I've got all of my 110s, all of my 220s, all marked. I know what everything is. And if I ever need to add anything later, I absolutely can. But this is my setup. I also have my mini split uh, hardwired to this panel as well, right? So that's always drawing power uh, from the shop. Now that's wired to a quick disconnect outside, just like a traditional you know, heating and, and cooling unit for your home. Um, but it is on the sub panel for the shop. I get a lot of questions about what this is. This right here, uh, which you can still, yeah, you can kind of see it. This is a large access panel and it's just like a, I think it's like a plumbing access panel. But anyways, I can simply pop this off right here and it will open up the wall. So I can actually see all the lines running into the attic. So if I ever need to add anything, I can literally pop this off. We can run all the lines down into the top of the box and clearly see them going up into the attic and then run uh, anywhere in the attic. So uh, all I did is this was like white and I just painted it the same color as, as the rest of the house or the rest of the garage, excuse me. Um, so having this access panel here uh, was really, really nice to have. And again, it gives me access. Have I ever needed it? No, because I haven't added any outlets. Um, but that is the power setup that I have in my shop. Now to expand on that a little bit more, one of the common questions I get is, well, yeah, you have a 200 amp service, but what if you trip the breaker because you're running tools in your shop and you're running stuff in the house. Here's the bottom line. The only way I would ever run into any problem in my shop and in the house is if this scenario happened. We were running the air conditioning unit for the house, the washer and dryer, the dishwasher, both ovens, the electric stove, all the lights in the house were on, and then I was running my dust collector, my CNC, my joiner planer combo, my table saw, my band saw, and various hand tools. If we were doing all of that at the same time, then maybe I could run into an issue. Uh, but I can tell you, I've never tripped a breaker. Um, I've never uh, had any issue. All of my tools are basically on their own circuit with the exception of um, my jointer, planer, and bandsaw, which I'll talk about that once we get to that section, but um, they're never being run at the same time. So it's never a problem. But like the dust collector on its own circuit, CNC machine, own circuit, those two run at the same time, never any issues. So um, I get a lot of questions about the power setup that I have. So that's a better idea. And I think I actually have a video where I, I talk about that um, in a little bit more detail when I talk about shot modifications. But uh, for those of you that have not seen any of those videos, that's my power setup. As we continue down this wall, there's a few things that I wanna highlight. Here you get a really good representation of the ductwork that goes up. And so my main trunk being this that comes out of the machine, this is six inch. The ductwork that I use is the Nordfab, like click or uh, clamp together ductwork. It's, it's expensive, but it is worth every penny in my opinion. I've had to like take sections off uh, to either move something or adjust something or clear something. And it's as simple as me just unclamping everything. But this is the main trunk six inch and then it starts to drop down to four and go to the different tools. Um, I've got a video that kind of talks about this a little bit closer if you want to find out more. Um, up here, I wanted to highlight, I've got one of the Powermatic air filtration systems. And the reason why I placed it here, as you can see in front of it is the mini split. And my idea behind this is one, it's centrally located uh, kind of centrally located. It's more about one third. I broke my shop down into to thirds basically. 
And so it's kind of like in that first third. And so the idea behind it is the the air goes around the room and continues to cycle and everything. It works really good. The thing I like about it the most is it's an extremely quiet. And so for me, somebody that films a lot, having one of these where I can actually run it while I'm filming, it's not running right now, but I could do that with this if I wanted to, and I have done it many times. One of the biggest reasons I put it here was because I thought that by placing it in front of the mini split might help divert some of that dust from going into the filters on the mini split. And while I don't necessarily like have any hard data or hard facts, I can tell you that I clean the filters on the mini split a lot less frequently when I'm running this. I feel like it actually does a good job of of pulling a lot of that stuff away from it before it goes into the mini split. So um, it seems to be working pretty well. So we'll see if it continues to work well. The next thing is my first lumber rack setup. And so for this, I just use the Bora lumber racks. Um, I actually just recently did a video talking about tools that I would recommend or things that I would recommend. And these were on it. And I was very hesitant about these because especially when you open it up out of the box and you start putting it together, you're like, how can that handle that much weight? They're phenomenal. I mean, they are completely full as you can see here. And I have them staggered. I'll talk about that here in a minute, but they're really, really nice and really easy to uh, install. So um, let, me, let me go to this real quick and then I'll talk about that. So underneath here, I kept enough space to where I could store sheets of plywood. And so right here, I've got sheets and smaller pieces of plywood uh, leaning up against the wall. I obviously wish that I didn't have to do that. I would actually like to have them stored flat. I just don't have the space to do that. Um, but it works really well. So it gives me the ability to store four by eight sheets and not have to change anything with my setup. And I have plenty of space from here to here to accommodate those even a little bit longer if I needed to. But let's talk about the racks. So you can see I have this one kind of set off to the side and then this one's a little bit further left. So there's a couple reasons why I did that. The first reason was these were the first ones that I installed to take advantage of that space for these long boards that I didn't think I would be able to use any other way. Well, then I liked these so much that I wanted to get some others where I could actually store some shorter boards. And so I offset them and put them here. And that is mainly because my dust collection pipe comes at an angle. So what this allowed me to do is to maximize all of this unusable wall space efficiently. And so that's why I have it set up here the way that it is. All right, so continuing back down to the corner. So I'm gonna start kind of uh, discussing the one wall that is attached to the house. This right here is still the long wall. So we'll talk about the CNC machine and how I have mine oriented. So this is a little floating desk that I built just with some scrap wood um, because I like to stand while I'm working on things. Um, so I've got like a nice little stool that has an adjustable height and everything. But I put this here so one, it'll give me a little bit of space, which I use underneath it for small offcuts of plywood or other things like that. Um, but it's really, really close to the CNC machine and it's right next to my pendant where I can transfer all my files and use my CNC. And then I have my CNC in the corner and this worked out really good uh, because what you see right here is, is the edge of the doorway. And so it gave me just enough space to actually store my CNC in the corner uh, to where it's not, I, don't, I can't get to it all from all four sides, but I don't need to, I'll talk about that in just a sec, but uh, it, it really works well and allowed me to run my dust collection even closer to the wall, which you can see right here, which the dust collection for this is just on one of these swivel balls. Uh, so it just follows the, the machine around and it does a really, really good job. But for me, I only need access to two sides, the front side and this side, and I've never had any issues, uh, but it really was good to maximize the use of this space here and still give me you know, a free pathway in and out of the house. And now getting to the back wall. So this door right here is the entrance into my house. Immediately on the other side of this door is actually a laundry room and a slop sink, which is fantastic. Uh, I do wish I had one in the shop, but having one right inside the doors is really nice. But I have this door, then I have another door that leads into the kitchen and there's a bathroom just right there. So also I have a bathroom uh, very close by, but the benefit to this, we talked about uh, only one wall touches the house. So you have the laundry room area, then you have a bathroom area, then you have the kitchen, and then it goes out into our living room. Two doors of separation, when both of them are closed, you can literally almost hear nothing that's going on out in the shop, which is a fantastic 
uh, thing about the current shop that I have. Also, there is no room above the garage, so I don't have to worry about that. I've actually got a relatively busy street on the back side of the house, so any noise that's being emitted from this shop is masked by that noise, so my neighbors can't hear anything that I'm doing at any time in here. And then I'll talk about what's on the other side of the wall when I get to the last portion of that wall. But right up here, again, I wanted to use some unusable space for other reasons to store some more lumber. So again, I got some more of those Bora lumber racks and they're, they're just really great. And I have plenty of lumber up here. One thing I do have to be careful about is slamming this door. Cause if I slam this door, it will kind of move the lumber just a little bit and it's never fallen off, but I did come out here one time and I was like, why is my lumber not tight against the wall? And then I finally figured it out. It's cause sometimes I slam the door and it leaves a little bit of vibration up through the wall. And, and obviously we don't want that. We don't want lumber falling on our heads when we come out in the shop. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera and show you the last part of that wall. Okay, this is the last section of that wall. So right on the back side of this wall here is our, what was the office. Now it's kind of an office slash gym, more so a gym. Um, but again, it's a room that nothing that you hear going on inside of this room would interrupt that. And still, because that wall is insulated, you really just don't hear much of anything, um, depending on the tools that I'm running. If I'm running the CNC, you'll hear it inside of this room, uh, but it's a very faint noise. So again, that's good. The other thing that actually helped was putting this here. And this is one of the best things that I did for this shop. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. Um, what I use it for up top is again, more lumber storage. I've got a whole bunch of ash up there, a whole bunch of um, drawers that came out of something else that I built that I'm hoping to repurpose uh, sitting up there, uh, buckets, odds and ends things. So the whole reason I put this in the shop, um, well, let me tell you what this is. This is the Husky uh, cabinets from Home Depot. I think I bought them when they were on sale and it's the two cabinets on each side, the two base and these two wall hanging cabinets. And I wanna say it was like $2,400 worth every penny. It's the thicker gauge steel. Um, it holds a ton of stuff. But the reason I did this is because one, I was kind of just using this wall for you know, yard equipment and some other random things here and there. And I said, well, why don't I get something where I can start putting a lot of, of that stuff into? So what I did is all of my yard equipment, I switched everything over to battery operated just because I was tired of the gas operated stuff and the battery operated stuff. I have the Ego line. It's phenomenal. All of those are in here. Every single one of them. My lawnmower is in here. My weed eaters in here. My blowers in here. My hedge trimmers in here. Um, all the different accessories. Everything is all in this cabinet right here to include a bunch of other stuff. So there's just one shelf in the top of this. I'd open it, but the router table's in the way. Then up here, these hold a ton. I've got all kinds of different finished products, trowels, all mainly household stuff. This has a bunch of gardening uh, things, which we don't do any gardening. This is actually all gonna go away. Don't tell my wife. Over here on this side, these cabinets are massive and this house is so many things. So paint stuff, tarps, um, mortar, gravel, um, thin set. I mean, just all kinds of stuff, more paint equipment, trash bags, uh, you know, knee pads, paints, uh, my spray system. I mean, everything is inside of this. It's really incredible. These two drawers pull out. Uh, I've got a saws on here. I've got, uh, wallpaper cement. I, I mean, you're, you're going to start to, to hear a common theme and that is it's a lot of household style items and the whole reason I wanted to put this in here is because we were doing so much work in the house that I was starting to accumulate a lot of tools that would be used for home renovation style stuff and because I had those I had nowhere to put them and so this has been fantastic down here in the bottom you have a total of 10 drawers that are all soft clothes and I have all of my, you know, my separate tool sets, right? So this is like all the, the second, you know, versions of tools that I use for woodworking. Um, so I've got all my stuff that I use over at the assembly table. This is all the other stuff, additional tool storage, uh, painting consumables, rollers, brushes. I've got trim caulking equipment, random equipment, 
cabinet equipment, drywall, plumbing and flooring, electrical. I have everything labeled by what it is. So if I'm doing electrical work in the house, I can come out here, open up my electrical drawer and pull out any of the tools or consumables that I need. And it works that way with anything. When I'm doing flooring, I know where all my flooring stuff and when I'm doing plumbing, I know where all my plumbing stuff is. This thing holds so much and I still have so much space left. This was just a great idea for me and my shop. It doesn't stick out too far. It, this whole wall I ha now have for usable storage. So it's, it's really great. If you've ever considered getting something like this, they're a huge, huge lifesaver. Um, and I cannot recommend them enough. On the top, I just use it for chargers and random things. Uh, this is a dovetail, uh, dovetail jig from Festool that a friend of mine just gave me and I've got to find a home for it. But really, really a great setup. It, if you're interested in you know buying something like this, I'd tell you to pull the trigger because the amount of storage that you get out of that is pretty remarkable. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and get into the last two sections. And the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna talk about my tool cluster. Uh, and then we'll end it at my assembly table. I mentioned that I call this my tool cluster, my tool island. Um, and this is an idea that you know I didn't create. A lot of people have it set up like this in the shop, but when I first started woodworking, I never really thought of doing anything like this um, because I felt like it was gonna end up being too cramped. And again, I've changed this setup multiple times, and I wanna start by talking about the table saw specifically and kind of how I worked other tools around the table saw. So you see my dust collection pipe coming down and it's got you know three different branches that come off of that. There was always three different tools that were gonna be utilized in this location. Two primarily and one as a auxiliary setup. So one of the hoses was used for me to take and hook up to let's say my router table or my drum sander in the middle of the room and also use it as like a floor sweep type deal. Um, that didn't last too long. But the way I have my pipe coming out, this was all based on my original design, which was take the joiner and planer and take the table saw and rotate it this direction. So my table saw, I would in feed from that direction and out feed to this direction. And that worked really, really good. And there was really no reason to change it. And my table saw ended right up against those pipes. But what that meant is that my jointer and planer were over here on this side. And I was basically feeding my boards this way when I was jointing. And then when I was planing, they were coming back this way, further away from my assembly table. The dust collection pipes got in the way a little bit. Sometimes it kind of made a weird pathway for me here. Um, so one day I decided to rotate everything. And so that's what you see now. And what this allowed is I still have well over four feet uh, to the left side of the blade. I have just over eight feet before the start of the cut. And I have just over eight feet uh, after the cut is complete. So I don't have to move my table saw for long boards. I never cut anything longer than that. If I did, I would just have to move it or I would cut it another way. So what this has allowed is for me to have plenty of open access everywhere in the event I ever needed to cut something longer, I can open up my garage door and then make the cut. Granted, it doesn't change anything on the far side. And then another downside is obviously, I have my CNC machine here. So if I was like trying to cut one foot off of a four by eight sheet of plywood and pushing it through, I would run into a problem here. However, I never do that in my shop. So that is the purpose for me turning the table saw this direction. I have a large area here. I have plenty of walkway here. I have a nice open walkway to the left side of the saw. So now let's go ahead and move the camera over and I'll talk about the jointer and planer and the bandsaw, which is now here. So this is one of the biggest reasons why I turned everything. And this is gonna make sense here in just a moment. So I have the jointer and planer. I've got the hammer uh, A341, it's a 16 inch jointer planer combo. It takes up a large footprint, especially what you'll see right here which is the back side of this fence. So you have to have the clearance on the back side. So this kind of sits out a little bit, but as you can see, I still have a, I still have a perfectly wide enough walkway uh, right here. The way this works, for those of you that don't know, this is a combo machine. So I joint everything this way, and then I flip this table up, flip the, the uh, cover for the helical head over, and then I run boards through the planer this direction. 
So remember before I was talking about, I would push it in one way and then I'm pushing it away from the assembly table. The reason why that was so key for me is because think about it, you're gonna, be, you're gonna have all of your material on some sort of surface prior to running them through this. So let's say you're doing a tabletop and you have multiple pieces. Well, there's nothing worse than taking one long board, going over to a machine, wherever it is, running it through, taking it all the way back over and setting it down. And you're not maximizing the space of the movement in your shop. So that's what I was having here, not jointing. I'd still have to go back, push the board through, and then I could put it up here and then planing, I'm pushing it through, walking to the other side, grabbing it. Turning this this way stopped all of that. So now I'm able to maximize my steps, right? I'm taking a board from here, I'm coming over to the machine, I'm pushing it through the jointer, pushing all the boards through the jointer, doing all my jointing, placing the boards back here, turning the machine over. Now I'm taking those same boards, running them through the planer, coming over on this side, taking my board, placing it back on. So it's a constant circle in this small area. This is the one change that I've made because I've, I've wanted to you know turn my table saw back from time to time or cant it or whatever. This right here is kind of like the deciding factor in this whole setup now because this is in such a useful place. But when I was setting this up, I was just thinking like, what's the easiest, most efficient way to do this? And this is the most easy, efficient way of doing this, specifically with this machine. And now the third tool is part of this cluster, and that is the bandsaw. So originally, this was on the wall that the mini split and everything was on, but I had to keep it, my previous bandsaw, I had to keep it further away from the wall because that six inch duct was running behind it. So you know, basically I had all of that dead space behind the machine. So I originally moved this to the front side between the joiner planer and the table saw. And I actually had my drill press here. So I had a four tool cluster previously. While that did work, it did take up some of my space up in the front. And uh, there were times where I just kind of didn't like it to the right side. I really like having the four tools together. That was really, really nice. Um, but there was just really no need. So I went ahead and moved it to this side. And the reason I did that is one, it's now closer to the blast gates. So I have all of my blast gates here. I've got the one that goes to the right is for the table saw. I've got the one that the band saw is actually connected to. I'll talk about that in just a moment, right here. And then for the joiner planer combo, I've got my blast gate right here. So all of the blast gates are easily accessible with these three tools here. Now, one of the biggest benefits to moving this here was this dust collection pipe work doesn't go all the way down to the ground. So it was always you know, moving and shifting a little bit. When I had my table saw turned the other direction, it was connected to the table saw. Well, then I moved it, so it was kind of just flopping around. So I've actually connected my duct work to the bandsaw. So it is rock solid. It is not going anywhere. Um, so that's a really nice benefit to this. The other thing, my end feed is this direction. So the joiner planer combo is never impeding my workflow at the bandsaw. So I have a nice, perfect opening from this side to this side. There's nothing on this side that is getting in the way. It, it just works really well. It doesn't stick out too far. Again, I don't know if you can see too much in the video, but I have a large walkway. And that's, that's one thing I want you guys to all key in on with this setup is that I basically, everything is on the exterior portions of the room with the exception of two major things. My tool, uh, island, I guess you could call it, and my assembly table. And around both of those sections, I have large walkways. And that comes in really handy when you're moving large pieces around, when you need somewhere to store something. There's just plenty of room around each one of these. And it was all designed and set up that way for a reason. So I'm not, I can easily access anywhere in my shop in a circular motion or a straight line, and I'm not zigzagging around lots of different things. And so that is why I have this set up the way that it is currently. So now let's get into the most important part to close this video out of my shop. And that is the assembly table. And I'm gonna to talk to you guys about some plans that I have moving forward with this assembly table. There's a reason why I wanted to save this for last and because the most important area in my entire shop is this table. Now, if you wanna find out more details about how my crosscut station and setup and all that stuff works, go check out a recent video that I did where I did a very deep dive into the 
the work surface of this and how I use it. So I'm not gonna redo that in this video, but I wanna talk about this table specifically. So it's three MFTs side by side on a base. Now, I mentioned before that I have some plans moving forward into 2022 with this table. This table's awesome. It is tons of surface area. It has so many different uses. This is one of the things that I'm most happy with in my shop. However, the thing that I'm most unhappy with is the base. And again, this is the Rockler metal stand bases. Nothing wrong with the stands. It's just that the ones that I used were 48 by 48. So the two stands with the top on it is four foot by eight foot. Well, three MFTs oriented in the way that I have them oriented is not quite four feet by eight feet. So that creates a problem. And the problem that it created is that on this side, I'm able to get this whole edge flush with the end of the table. And on this side, I'm able to get the whole edge flush with the table. I cannot do it on that side or that side. So what that causes is me not having the ability to use all four sides, the aluminum extrusion, which I really wish that I could. So the plan that I have is actually going to be to rebuild the base and just use typical you know, cabinet construction. And, but I'm gonna build it the exact same size as the three tops. Therefore, I can use the edges around the entire table and not have to worry about the table underneath it. Now, one other thing that I would really like to do, because I'm considering getting rid of the router table, because at this point, I'm just not using the router table enough to justify it taking up that space. That doesn't mean I don't want the ability to use a router table. What it means is, can I not build it into this table? And that is the plan that I would like to do because I do a lot of cross cutting and stuff at this station and all of my cross cuts are made right here on this cut line. So I have plenty of support to the left and the right, primarily the left. Again, if you wanna check out the video, uh, go take a look at that after this. But I wanna route out a section where I can put a router plate and a lift into this end of the table. And then if I ever need to use a router table for some reason, say for larger bits or for templates or something like that, I can do it at the same table that I'm working at. And it's as easy as me just dropping in my router plate and utilizing it as a router table. So with that being said, I need to develop that into the design to where there's an open area that I can hook some sort of dust collection up to and everything else. But that's an idea that I have and that I think will be going, and then that will make this table basically the most multi-function table uh, ever. And I, I think it'll be really, really nice. And I'm excited about trying that out. I'll bring the camera in, in just a moment, just so you can kind of see the, the main side. Other sides, just random storage. I have one big drawer. I have one cut out for my stool and I have one area where I keep like a tile cutter and some other stuff, just a big open area. But on this side, there's actually, you know, thought behind why I decided to set this up the way that I did. But the thing I wanna highlight here with this table is that this is where I spend 99% of the time in my shop. On this side of the table with the miter saw behind me, all of my clamps and measuring and layout, all of my Festool stuff, all of my accessories, everything. It's all within arm's reach of this location. And so that is what I kept in mind when I decided to design this layout. And again, you can see I have plenty of space. This is probably the most narrow walkway that I have in the entire shop, but it's because I don't need it to be any bigger. And I want it to be close to the things that I'm reaching for all the time, i.e., hey, I need the, you know, I need a new pad for the sander. Boom, it's right here in this drawer. I can grab it, I can change it out, and it's right there. Hey, I need my trim router. Hey, I need my jigsaw. Hey, I need the domino, whatever it is. I'm breaking down uh, rough lumber. I need to make a cut on the miter saw. I take the board, I make the cut on the miter saw, I turn back around, it's all right here. Everything starts and stops right here. Joiner planer, milling up rough lumber, I'm putting all my rough lumber up on the table, I'm running it through, and I'm constantly going back and forth to this. So this is where everything happens in my shop. It's where I start projects and where I end projects. This to me is just super important, and this was the one thing that I wanted to have the most thought into, and it's the one thing that I'm trying to figure out how I can make it even better, hence why I'm planning on building a router table into this assembly table, which I think will be really, really cool. Um, but there's just so many uses for this. And again, all of my most used stuff 
is all right here in this area. I don't have things that I need here in my Husky storage cabinets because it just doesn't make sense. I'm not gonna put the items that I need to use right here on the other side of the shop. I'm gonna put them right here where I need them. So hopefully that gives a little bit of clarity as to why I have my shop set up the way that I do and the things that I think about when figuring out the best design for a shop. It's all about your workflow, how you do things and what you, where you spend the most time. And for me, this is absolutely where I spend the most time. I'm not gonna get into a ton of detail as to, you know, exactly what things I have here, but what I can tell you is that they're all, they all operate on the uh, Festival Sustainer pullout trays. The sustainers or the things that you see here that are in the assembly table are the sustainers that I use the most or the things that are inside of those sustainers that I would use the most. And some examples of that would be sandpaper, LR32, um, square, uh, Festool connectors, something like that. But these are really cool. And my new design, I'm gonna incorporate these a lot more. So I bought these plastic trays that go inside of here and then you can actually buy the Festool bins and you can you know, affix these however you want. So you can see I have three of the blue and green. This one has eight of the green, screws, everything like that. So you can really get organized and actually maximize the amount of the uh, pull out trays that you can put for small things like that. So the next setup I have, there will actually be like one or two entire bays of this. The only downside to this is that my son can come in here and easily grab screws whenever he wants. But the sustainers that you see here, the reason why they're here is because they, they carry something that I'm using regularly. Another example is some dominoes right here. So that's kind of the method that I chose for this and why I wanted these things on this side. And then one other thing that I wanted to point out, since this is where I spend the most of my time, I also have one of the anti-fatigue mats because I'm standing here so often. So that is a wrap on 2021. I know that that was a long video, uh, but shop tours traditionally are, but I really just want you guys to understand why it is I set things up the way that I do. There's a lot of thought, a lot of trial and error, a lot of different experiences that all led to me constantly changing my shop, really. There's never a time where it's just gonna be perfect and you're not gonna to wanna to change anything. Your needs change, your skills change, mine have, um, and I have adjusted and found better ways of doing things. And I've also found a lot of ways that didn't work. Um, and I've gone back and forth many, many times and I actually talked about some of those things in here. I've, I've moved things to 10 different spots in the shop and they just end up back to where they originally started. So that is my shop at the end of 2021. Uh, I'll probably look at doing something like this again, maybe at the end of 2022 uh, with all of the changes that we talked about in this video uh, going into the next video. If there was anything that I didn't cover or you have questions and you wanna know something more specific or want me to address something that I talked about in the video, do me a favor, leave it in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer every single question that comes my way. But that's gonna do it for this video. That's gonna do it for this year. If you guys wanna find out more about what I'm doing, head over to bentswoodworking.com. And until next time, everybody, get out in the shop, try something new, and I'll see you in 2022. Thanks.